3D parametric graphing, uh, I've now discovered, can be uh, quite easy to use to model solids of revolution. And what you can see that I have here is um, also um, did a little circle and used uh, this C, this stored variable C, and now I'll show you what I did. All right, so this is parametric, and this one, um, the x value is, is C, and we have F1 of C to give the height, cosine of T for some of the rotation, and some filling with the uh, cosine of U. And the Z, similarly, F1 of C, and sine of T. Um, the parameters uh, for this one are from 0 to 2 pi, and uh, getting spun around pi took care of all of that. All right, and uh, to show you the story for just one equation to get the whole thing, um, and it's t, f1 of t for both of these, and as you might have guessed, it's a cosine of u and the sine of u. And that's how you can rotate something around the x-axis. If you want to rotate it around the y-axis, just um, switch these around. And I um, haven't <laughs> played with it enough to, to double check. But um, yeah, so you would make um, the y value the F, f1 of t. The parameters on this one, because it's going from um, the on the x-axis because it's going from negative 2 pi to 2 pi that's what I did with that and spun it all the way around uh, with the 2 pi on that as well and so that's that story and it's the exact same story for this one here at the beginning of solids of revolution and uh, so there's there's that one um, the beautiful thing is it can be rotated all around in multiples of directions oh I haven't showed you this and if you hit play then as that little slice is moving along through there, then you can see the slice moving along through there. Isn't that lovely? Okay, so that was one thing that, that you can learn about um, or almost learn about from a, a calculus book. Um, but the next thing I was not able to learn about a lot of trial and error, and I'd like to show you some of my 3D cross-section efforts Alright, so here we are. Um, in the past, you were able to, to get a visual for what's going on by moving this around, and that was nice. And yes, you could uh, geomet geometry trace. Since I right clicked to geometry trace, then it is activated, and that, what I was on top of, will leave a trail behind. I think it's nice to leave that dot to click and that dot click. And so here goes geometry trace again. And leaves that nice little trail behind. You can see what kind of shape it is. So you get this visual for the, the 3D. Now, um, excited to say that this can also be done. And I, what I did was I just took that F1, and you can rotate this around all sorts of directions and see what's going on. You can see that they're nice square cross sections. All right. So how is this done? All right, so if we change it to parametric, and so I had to graph for each one of those bits, like the top part. Um, here's the side, and, and here's, um, actually, let's change the view so we can see things better. Yeah, let's look at it like this. And you can zoom out with the um, greater than, less than symbol. So let's turn it around and see if we can look at that again, perhaps at uh, this angle right here. Sure. So if we were to um, tab and arrow up, and we see that's one of the sides, and the z is out u times f1 of t, and then here's the other side where the y value is 0. Then here's the uh, the base, and here's the height. All right. So how about let's take a look at that. Um, 
Uh oh. Oh, they got, there it is. Hmm. Now oh, this is one I was wanting to show. Yes. All right, so how did I do equilateral triangles? Equilateral triangles are done. Again, uh, right click and you can change it to parametric. And uh, here's one side of it. Notice the square root of 3 over 2, equilateral triangle. And then there's the, the 1 half of the F1. And so that tells what the Y is. And then on the other side of it, then it's similar, but with a minus sign. And then here's the base. Base is just T, the Z is 0, F1 of T times U. So that one worked out um, nicely with that. And I was quite excited about these semicircles. So here was um, the previous way, best I was able to do it. And now here are semicircles that you can even feel like you're going into. Haha. <laughs> So how how are these done? What's the equation? For the record, the equation, parametric 3D graphing. Look at that, just two equations. We're able to do the whole thing. This is the base, T F1 of T times the U, and the Z is 0, and then here's the semicircles. So um, the cosine of U and the sine of U is probably uh, hopefully you remember that from when we just rotated it, but we didn't want to just rotate it. We wanted to um, well, spin it. We wanted to get that um, half of a. Oh, and here's the parameters, just going uh, to pi, not two pi, all the way around. And uh, the t, since I want to go out to to four, then that's why it's from one to four. And um, cutting it in half, and um, shifting it up on the y, shifting it up the y. So, for example, you can see what would happen if we took off that half then it scoots it over um, too far that way. That's just a mere shifting it up. That's kind of cool though. And then if we were to come up in here and if this wasn't here then you could see what I was saying about it being <laughs> about it being the semicircle or rotating but with that half and this rotated a half then that's the story. Alright. Enjoy.